Hey guys, uh, Doug Darbro, uh, director of the graduate program uh, at Shawnee State University. Let me tell you what's going on with this this video. Uh, we used to bring students uh, on campus. I think it was the Saturday before classes began, and uh, and that worked really well. And we had students, uh, uh, you know, who primarily were high school teachers in the local area. But as we've expanded our program out into uh, Cleveland and Columbus and Cincinnati and Dayton. Uh, I think it's a little unfair to ask people to drive a total of you know six, seven hours, uh, even eight or nine hours actually, uh, just to uh, to sit through a presentation f for something that I can uh, uh, upload on, on as a lecture or not a lecture, but upload, upload as a, a video. So so that's the purpose. Uh, it's just to save you some driving time. Uh, as I'll talk to you a little later about the first uh, on-campus session, we will have an orientation session, uh, but most likely we'll just uh, we'll go to a restaurant or something and uh, keep it extremely casual, uh, which, is, which is kind of my preference uh, uh, anyway. So. so guys, graduate orientation 2017, I hope you're ready because uh, we're getting ready to do this. Uh, a little bit of history about our program. The motivation for the program started back in 2011-2012. Actually, it was in uh, April of two. Uh, let me see. Yeah, April of 2012. Uh, I was chair of the department at the time, and the associate provost called me and said, Doug, I want to come up and talk to you uh, about the potential for a master's program in mathematics here at Shawnee State. And um, anyway, long story short, uh, the, um, the motivation for it was an increasing demand for teachers for our College Credit Plus courses. Uh, there was a change of qualifications, which, which uh, went through a couple of phases. The first um, phase of qualifications, you had to have a master's in your content area. Um, that was relaxed a little bit, so today you can have a master's uh, in anything as long as you have what's called a cohesive set of 18 credit hours uh, in, your, in your discipline. Uh, when we start thinking about the program, we, we realized that we wouldn't be able to develop this thing, or at least to, uh, to deliver it in a traditional manner, meaning that students came to campus and, um, uh, you know, took classes uh, on campus because, uh, you know, again, our target audience were uh, working professionals. So we came up with an on online delivery. Now, when, when I was first, this was first proposed to me, I was completely against it because I was like, you know, I can't imagine the online delivery being as effective as a face-to-face -face delivery. In fact, at graduation ceremonies just uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the ex-provost uh, came up and was talking to me, and he was laughing because I've become known as kind of you know, like a little walking expert on uh, online teaching here at Shawnee State. I don't know about an online expert, but uh, at least, at least a, a lot of experience. Um, and uh, he was laughing about that you know, five years ago, he couldn't even get me to talk about it. So uh, what I found, uh, you know, I'm not uh, buying into the online delivery because it's something I settled for. I buy onto the online delivery because I think it can be just as good and in some cases even better than the face-to-face -face delivery. So anyway, we, um, uh, we uh, received a grant from the state of Ohio, from the Ohio Department of Edu uh, Higher Education. Uh, I think our grant was about 100000 to start our program, and we had a list uh, of, I think, about 12 students who applied for the pilot cohort. I think we uh, ended up uh, accepting 10 of those. Uh, we had eight who graduated with their master's, and we had one who transferred midway in the program uh, to, to enter a, the Ph.D. in statistics program at the University of Cincinnati, and then we had another student whose wife accepted a position elsewhere, and he ended up moving because of that. So essentially we had, of our 10 students that we had in our pilot cohort, eight successfully completed their master's. Uh, one dropped out of the well, I didn't even, it's not even safe to say dropped out, but uh, left the program to pursue a Ph.D., and uh, the other left because of um, uh, a job situation. So anyway, uh, once we started our pilot cohort, we started looking at program development, and that's the part of the program that, um, that, that I got really involved in. And that started around late spring of 
2012 up to November of 2013. Uh, our first attempt uh, was denied through RAGS. RAGS is uh, uh, an acronym for the Regents Advisory Council on Graduate Studies. Uh, uh, because uh, our first attempt, we just had 30 credit hours of straight mathematics classes. Uh, they thought that a program of this nature needed a thesis, and uh, uh, so we, we, uh, we took their advice, and the second attempt uh, was approved by RAGS uh, November 2013, and we uh, received uh, uh, full accreditation from the Higher Learning Commission uh, on uh, during May of 2014, uh, course components you can think of are uh, the if you're degree seeking. Now let me let me talk about that a little bit. Um, we have a lot of students who come in and they're like, okay, well I've already got a master's degree. All I need are the 18 credit hours, and that's fine. We're here to to suit your needs. We're here to serve you. But I'm going to tell you a whole lot, and I'd say right now, well, I don't have to even say, I know because I keep the stats on it. Uh, about 80% of our students who come in with the, with the prior master's with the intent of just completing the 18 hours end up completing a second master's in mathematics. Now, the reason is pretty simple. The hardest part of our program is the first summer. And once you get that first summer behind you, uh, part of it is transition, part of it is just, uh, it's, it's brutal because most people take three, uh, three classes. Uh, but uh, it's the hardest part. And what they look up, they look up and they've got their 18 hours and they're like, my gosh, I've only got 18 hours left. And that's going to be the easy part. So uh, we have a lot of people who change goals uh, midstream uh, who were uh, not degree seeking but become degree seeking. So if you're, uh, if you're seeking the 18 hours only, you can take any of those courses except for, at the very bottom, you can't take the Research 1, 2, or 3 class. But all the other classes, uh, you can take any of those to satisfy your 18 credit hours. If you are degree seeking, the content component can be thought of two subcomponents. The core component, you need at least five courses from those six classes, uh, Analysis 1 and 2, Regression 1 and 2, and Algebra 1 and 2. And you need four courses from the electives. Now, if you take all six courses from the core, then you only have to take three courses from the elective. The research component is um, primarily what I teach. Uh, I teach the Quant Methods 1 and 2, uh, the Quantitative Methods 1 and 2, or I, I should say the Quantitative Methods 1 class, is uh, really designed just to turn you into a quantitative researcher. Uh, the quantitative methods too uh, kind of falls up on that, but also gets into test theory, validity, reliability, um, measurement, instrumentation, uh, things that we run into a lot when we conduct quantitative research in uh, the field of education. So, so uh, guys, that's what it takes to get your master's. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I run these um, numbers quite often. Uh, our success rates are unbelievably high. Uh, and I think the, uh, the, the main reason is, uh, uh, first of all, I think we recruit good people, uh, good students. Uh, secondly, our professors are amazing. I'll talk more about them uh, a little later. And, uh, we're, I mean, we're, we are, you know, we're, we're so student-centered. And I know a lot of universities say, you know, eh, we're student-centered. Uh, guys, we really are. Uh, if there's an issue, something going on, um, talk, to, talk, to, talk to your professors first. Uh, feel free to talk to me. We are truly, uh, and something I'm, I take a lot of pride in, we're truly a student-centered program. All right, sample schedule. If you're seeking your degree, uh, you can complete it in about uh, 26 months. So summer one, you can take six or nine credit hours. Um, fall one and spring one, five credits each. And I give you a sample uh, schedule uh, with more details in just a second. So um, that's, uh, that's the way you complete your degree in uh, approximately 26 months. Uh, delivery. Uh, the online delivery was uh, uh, primarily because our audience 
uh, is working professionals. People who are high school teachers uh, who are uh, seeking to become qualified to teach College Credit Plus courses. Now, over the last year or so, I've started modifying the goals of our program to, um, to become more attractive to community college instructors, junior college instructors, even in different states, and just the traditional graduate student who wants to come to campus, get a graduate assistantship, uh, teach some classes for us, and get their tuition paid, and, uh, and, and get, a, get a, a reasonable stipend. So uh, anyway, uh, the delivery is online to minimize the number of trips to campus. Uh, just to give you an indication of how we have gone through a sequence of minimizing these number of trips, the 2012 cohort I told you about earlier had to, co to come to campus for Friday, Saturday, and a half a day on Sunday for five times throughout the summer. So every other week, they would get to campus in, uh, at noon on Friday. We would have classes until about 7 o'clock. We would have classes all day on Saturday. And Sunday morning, we would have classes until about 1 o'clock, and then everyone would be dismissed. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I didn't like the Sunday mornings because you know, I, I go to church regularly, and I didn't, I didn't want to miss church. And uh, so we, um, and, and we also found that we really didn't need as much face-to-face -face instruction because the online delivery was so effective. So we finally got down to where we just had five on-campus sessions, not five over three days, but just five sessions over one day. And then we found out what, you know, hey, we're actually pretty good at this online delivery. We don't even need that. So I resubmitted the paperwork to HLC, Higher Learning Commission, to get our accreditation level changed to where we were what's considered a mostly, almost fully online program. So. The only thing that we uh, require now uh, is two trips to campus for your midterm and your final. And uh, we are very, very flexible in working around your schedule for that. Uh, so guys, if you think about the delivery, a three-hour course at Shawnee State University has approximately 37 and a half contact hours per semester. Our summer schedule is spread over 11 weeks. So for each three-hour course, you can expect to... Uh, watch about three, three and a half hours of videos. If you're taking these classes in the fall and the spring, you can expect about two and a half hours uh, of videos per week for each three hour course. Plus time for assignments and studying. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, it, it, it says, uh, it provides a pretty good indication that uh, uh, it's, it, it can be pretty busy times. Well guys, year one, uh, we typically um, uh, suggest that students take 19 credit hours, so nine credit hours in the summer. Abstract one, applied regression one, and probability with Dr. Desario, Dr. De Devcota, and Dr. Whitaker. Uh, fall 2017, abstract algebra two, so that's the second part with Dr. Desario. And that's where you get into your introduction to quantitative methods with me. That's a two-hour course, so that's, that's where we get the five hours for fall 2017. For spring 2018, same thing. Uh, you would start the mathematical analysis sequence with Dr. Whitaker, and uh, you would take the quantitative methods and test theory, too, uh, with me. Year two would consist of 16 hours. Um, <clears throat> complete the sequence of analysis too with Dr. Whitaker and take applied regression too. Uh, Dr. Defcoda is actually leaving the university. He's accepted a position at North Georgia University, so he won't be with us next summer. So chances are that applied regression two class uh, will be taught uh, by me. Uh, fall 2018 will offer either uh, geometry or complex variables, and uh, and there's a possibility that. We could offer linear algebra. We're in the uh, process of creating a graduate level linear algebra course that will become part of our sequence uh, very soon. So, so guys, finally, uh, <laughs> year three, one hour, that's the capstone. That's uh, uh, the research three class that you take with me. It's one hour. That's where we graduate and uh, everybody is happy. 
All right, gang, administrators and staff, Dr. Bauer, uh, he's the provost and the VP for Academic Affairs. Uh, Dr. Milliken, she is the acting dean. Uh, she only has about, mm, I don't think only a couple more weeks. Uh, uh, well, yeah, about a couple more weeks, but, uh, uh, I, and I forget the, uh, the we, we just hired a new dean and I forget uh, his name. Uh, Dr. Whitaker is the chairperson of the math, uh, Department of Math. Uh, I'm the director of the graduate program. Miss Penny Merritt, who you worked with to get uh, your application material submitted. She's the graduate school center administrator. And Heather Thacker is the best secretary in the world. She's with uh, the Department of Math. Professors, <clears throat> Dr. Blau, um, he primarily teaches abstract algebra one and two. He's also preparing the um, uh, the linear algebra course that will be taught for the first time this fall. Uh, me, a PhD from the University of Kentucky. Uh, Dr. Lee is a PhD from Wayne State. Uh, he is our, he's our researcher. He pumps out more research. I think he, he uh, published 14 journal articles last year, which is insane. Uh, he is a, a very, very hard worker, very smart guy. And we love it when he can um, work in some time to teach a, a grad class for us. Uh, Dr. Whitaker, probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met, a PhD from LSU. However, he's not an LSU fan. He's a huge Alabama fan. So uh, if you really want to confuse him, say, yeah, Dr. Darbo said that you're a huge LSU fan and you don't, uh, don't like Alabama. Uh, but anyway, Dr. Whitaker, uh, in addition to being the chair, he teaches the probability and the analysis one and analysis two classes. Uh, our associate professors, everybody on the previous screen, um, let, me, let me go back, uh, we have all reached full professor uh, with graduate status um, uh, rank. So uh, associate professors, um, be Dr. Nichols, he teaches the foundations of geometry, PhD from University of Minnesota. And Dr. Desario teaches uh, uh, more classes than anyone else. He's, uh, he teaches number theory, complex, geometry, abstract one and two, uh, PhD from Temple. And uh, Dr. Dev Coda, who again, unfortunately, is leaving us for uh, North Georgia University, has a PhD from South Dakota State University and teaches our statistics and regression. And he was actually in the process of uh, developing an inference one uh, statistical inference class, graduate level class, but uh, uh, that'll be on the agenda for whoever we uh, hire to replace him. So guys, tips for success. Uh, you guys, 2017, so we had our 2012, 2014, 15, 16, so you guys are our fifth uh, cohort. Here are the things that I have learned from the previous four cohorts. First semester especially, the summer semester, prepare to feel overwhelmed. The second bullet, a lot of people read that and they laugh. I'm telling the truth. Explain your situation to your family, friends, and significant other. This is going to be challenging. It was challenging for me. Uh, I remember I, I started my master's at, uh, in mathematics at the University of Kentucky. Uh, that transition, that first year, was really overwhelming because uh, it doesn't. You, it, graduate school isn't just a little harder than undergrad. It's a lot harder. And uh, I was thinking that I could go into grad school and uh, and uh, kind of use the same study habits uh, as I could in undergrad, and I found out I couldn't. Uh, so, so prepare to feel overwhelmed. You're going to be, uh, but uh, you know, be persistent. I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. Uh, treat videos like your lectures. Uh, what I mean by that is be involved. Take notes. Recopy your notes. Recopying your notes is one of the best pieces of advice I got in grad school. So I would go to class, and I would sit there on the edge of my seat taking notes. And when I left, everything would be jumbled. And like the next day, I would find a quiet place in the library and I would sit down and I would recopy my notes and go through them very slowly. And uh, I found that to be one of the best things I could, uh, I could do in terms of uh, beginning uh, 
the, the process of studying for, uh, for my classes. Form study groups. Um, I really don't even know if I'd have a PhD today without, uh, without my study group partners. We got, uh, uh, you know, we got close. Uh, we worked hard together, spent, uh, spent hours and hours and hours together. Uh, it's a little harder online the way this program is. In fact, it's a lot harder because you're not just hanging out with each other all the time. But we're going to come up with ways um, to, uh, to, to provide study groups online. And uh, I'll talk more about that um, in, in another video. And guys, I always say that I, I sit here today with a PhD and as a full professor because of the three Ps. Persistence, I never gave up, perseverance, and a whole lot of patience. Because there's times that you're going to want to beat your head against the wall and quit. There was, for me, every professor I've ever talked to uh, could just, just about uh, said the same thing. So remember, guys, don't give up, persist, persevere, and, uh, and, uh, and be patient because it's, it's, it's going, from, from time to time it's going to, uh, going to challenge you. Uh, our graduate assistantship uh, was awarded to Alex Kozan this semester. Um, there's, uh, for, for anyone with our GA, we give in-state tuition up to 18 credit hours per academic year <clears throat> with an eight thousand annual uh, eight thousand dollar annual stipend um, I have some other opportunities for graduate assistantships in the works in fact I just talked to the associate uh, provost or associate uh, registrar this morning uh, and I've got something in um, in the works so and guys uh, I see right now my email address ddarbro at Shawnee that s should not be capitalized um, so, just make a note of that. I don't know if we go through or not, uh, uh, but it should not be capitalized. So, if you're interested in, a, uh, in one of these additional graduate assistantships <clears throat> that may materialize, and actually I think it will, um, uh, just, just send a letter of uh, interest to me. Uh, college credit, credit plus credentialing, uh, I talked about it a little bit earlier. It's, um, it's pretty simple. You need a master's degree in the discipline or minimally a master's degree in something else in a cohesive set of 18 semester credit hours in the discipline relevant to the graduate coursework. There's also this, uh, you know, if you're making satisfactory progress. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, once you get one graduate class behind you, <clears throat> even better yet, two or three, uh, I usually am willing to write your principal or your superintendent uh, a letter uh, recommending you to be able to teach dual credit courses uh, for the College Credit Plus uh, program uh, based on, uh, the, you know, again, making satisfactory progress for completion of the qualifications. <clears throat> Because my allergies are really working on me today, so voice is cracking and <clears throat> I got the tickling in my throat, so uh, sorry. Uh, academic integrity. The professors, a couple of professors asked me to include this. Uh, we've had some unfortunate, not, not many, you know, it's, it's happened two or three times of, of plagiarizing. A lot of these problems, you know, you're going to find, you can find online. You might say, well, why'd you tell me that? Well, I, I don't think I really need to tell you that for you to know that. Um, you know, you, you just need to fight that. This needs to be your work. And, um, you know, if we find evidence of uh, some, someone plagiarizing, uh, using other people's work, you know, we encourage you to work together. But, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it has to be your work uh, that, that is submitted for a grade and for credit. So if you have any questions about that, the great thing again about the video, if I put this up in a PowerPoint in class, <clears throat> you may not get this written down, but the great thing about uh, the video is you can pause it, take screenshots, and do all sorts of creative things to, to get caught up. All right, finally, uh, on-campus sessions for the summer 2017. Your midterms are going to be on June 28th and 29th. Um, 
you can see the schedule. So on Wednesday, June 28th, um, 10 a.m., you'll have a regression 1, 2 p.m., abstract 1, and at 5 p.m., we'll have an orientation. <clears throat> and I figure what we'd probably do is go over to the pub and, um, you know, we'll have a beer together or an iced tea or whatever, uh, whatever uh, our choice is. And uh, it'd be a good time for a kind of a uh, very casual, informal meet and, and greet. And I'll try to get the professors uh, to come as well. Uh, Thursday, June 29th at 11, the probability 1. Now, a couple things. Overnight accommodations are provided at $25. I can get dorm rooms. Uh, and guys, these aren't the, uh, the old-fashioned dorm rooms. These are pretty nice. They're, they're apartment style. <clears throat> so I can get those for $25. Or if you prefer um, more privacy, you know, you can, uh, although you would have your own bedroom in that situation. Uh, you can uh, stay at the at the Holiday Inn or stay at a, a local hotel. So, um, but uh, you know, let's say you have family, or let's say that uh, you know, uh, you know, whatever. There's a, there's a, a lot of situations that uh, that could could lead to this, um, and you just want to go ahead and take your probability class on Wednesday, and you don't want to stay overnight. Uh, then just talk to Dr. Whitaker, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll work it out. We'll make it work again. Student-centered. Um, we can't. We we can't you know, meet all the accommodations, uh, but we sure do our best to meet uh, those that are reasonable. Uh, final exams are Thursday, August fourth, and Friday, Friday, August fifth. Now, if you look at the the schedule for Shawnee State University, you'll see that the summer classes end the week before, but because our graduate program is so intense. The graduate classes are so intense, uh, and because I have a good relationship with our registrar, <clears throat> we have decided early on that we extend our uh, summer uh, for a week. I wish we could extend it for two weeks, so maybe start a week earlier and uh, and go a week later. But uh, you know, right now uh, this is working. Students are successful, so um, uh, it's working. So why uh, why reinvent the wheel? All right, gang, that's it. I want to show you a little bit about uh, how things are, uh, how they work. Um, once you log on to Shawnee State uh, through my SSU, you can go to the Faculty tab. Well, you log back on here. Uh, you can go to Blackboard. And you can find your site. Now, I want to show you the way that I set up my uh, Mass 6620 from the spring. So over here, you'll have a list of your courses. And keep in mind that all professors do it differently, and that's part of the kind of their class orientation the first week is to, to tell you how to access their videos and their expectations. But what I do is I run everything under content. And I position and, and situate everything out throughout the semester by weeks. So for the first week, which started January 9th, uh, they can click this folder. There's a copy of the syllabus. We were looking at uh, 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 statistical design called MANOVA, which is multiple ANOVA, where you have correlated uh, dependent variables. And um, so you, uh, this is a file, but this is the first video, so we can click it. And um, th Short video here on I absolutely hate listening to myself, so uh, I got I got to delete or uh, mute that. So anyway, it's a, <clears throat> this video was about 27 minutes. So uh, kick back, put in your uh, earphones, and um, and take your notes, and it's just like sitting in class. But uh, uh, the beauty of it is you can, um, or well, well, my students. Uh, at that time, could have watched this video at two in the morning, or five in the, or two, you know, five in the morning, or just whatever, whenever their uh, uh, their family and job responsibilities permit them to watch the videos. Guys, uh, I gave, um, depending on the class I teach, I usually uh, give uh, three to four assignments plus a midterm and a final. So you can expect uh, in the summer about every two weeks to have an assignment due. And again, you can expect to watch about three and a half to four hours of video for each class. So, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, 
<laughs> it can be busy, all right? Well, guys, uh, let me, uh, I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me show you me in case you see me on campus. Um, if I can remember... So this is me. No, this is me and my family. I'm uh, the big ugly one on the left. Uh, this is my wife, and these are my daughters. I uh, probably tell that my daughters are Asian. Uh, they're both uh, adopted from China, and they are amazing. They're uh, so smart and uh, really, really, really good kids. So uh, we're very lucky. So, so guys, um, that's. Uh, that's who I am. By the way, I love to scuba dive, love to play golf. I love my boat. Uh, I'm, I spend so much time in the sun that uh, one of the things I do every single year is go to my dermatologist to get checked out because uh, I love being outdoors. So guys, uh, that's all I got. Um, I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a great semester. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me or your professors if um, um, you know, for example, let's say the first assignment, you're still in undergrad mode, and you think, well, I'll just start this thing the night before it's due. If you do, it's, it's just not going to work. I'll just tell you right now. Um, and you just get caught. And don't be afraid to just call your professor or email them and say, hey, Dr. Whitaker, I just didn't allow myself enough time to do this. And I, you know, I want to do it right. Can I have a couple of days uh, extension? And I'll bet you uh, $100 to a donut hole that, uh, that uh, our professors will work with you, especially at first during the transition time. So, uh, Guys, that's it. Uh, take care.